Hello friends, in today's video we're going to go over the best builds for soloing the brand new 7 star turret event for Typhlosion which will be kicking off later this week. So kicking off on the 14th of April which is this Friday as of recording this video, the 7 star Typhlosion terror raid event will be live in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. As always we'll kick off by taking a quick look at the overview of this Pokemon, the potential possibilities this thing will have when we go into this terror raid event. As you can see Typhlosion it will have the abilities blaze or flash fire it's likely going to have flash fire as its hidden ability so it's going to have that immunity to all fire type attack it will be set to level 100 like all other seven star terror raid events and it will have the ghost terror typing tied to it big thing about typhlosion is it is a little bit faster a bit speedier than our previous terror raid event pokemon with a base speed of 100 and if we do the 30 times multiplier to its hp you're looking at a number around 8910 hit point damage that we're going to have to do to typhlosion to take it down in this raid now the move options for typhlosion are likely going to be big fire type attacks and ghost type attacks that are going to play off its ghost terror typing the big attacks that we're going to have to watch out for in particular are going to be Eruption. This is a move that is based off its HP. It is a base 150 base power at its maximum damage, boosted by the sun as well. It's going to be hitting extremely hard, so something to watch out for. Overheat is another option as well. I've put Lava Plume on there as well because it does have that secondary effect of having a 30% chance to burn the target when it does hit. Solar Beam is a nice coverage move that we're going to see probably played off if Sunny Day is something that Typhlosion has. It will go from a two turn attack to a one turn attack and it gives it an option to hit things like water type Pokemon, uh, rock type Pokemon, ground type Pokemon that may likely come to this raid. Now Focus Blast is something that has been talked about a lot with Typhlosion, it does get access to it and because of its high special attacking stat can do some significant damage with the Focus Blast. It also gives it an option to hit dog type Pokemon for super effective damage so something I think a lot of us are probably quite wary of going into this raid and I honestly think it's probably a possibility that we will see Focus Blast on this Typhlosion so it's something that we need to think about in our preparations going into this raid. Shadow Ball feels like the only real option that it's going to have if it's going down just a soul special route that it's going to have for a ghost type attack it doesn't get access to hex which i'm actually really surprised about because i thought initially the playoff with will-o-wisp or lava plume to burn the target and then use hex with that ghost terror typing to double its damage with the status effect could be something that could be quite problematic for us but shadow ball looks like the main attacking option that we'll see from a special attacking side of typhlosion now setup options typhlosion doesn't really have too many for us to worry about sunny day is definitely something i think we'll probably see it does boost the attacking power of things like eruption overheat lava plume all those fire type attacks it does make something like solar beam a one turn attack as well so that could be possible will-o-wisp is something i could definitely see it playing with as well because it is a nice support option where it can burn those physical threats now the other options i've starred here are something that a lot of people are kind of overlooking is that typhlosion is primarily going to be a special attacker and i think the majority of its big powerful attacks are special attacks but i don't think we should overlook the physical side of typhlosion it gets a lot of physical type attacks and it does get some options here with setup options where it could kind of play off those. So it's just a possibility. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it's something that I think we should take into consideration going into this raid with preparing our Pokemon. Now it does get Howl, so it does have access to boosting its attack and special attack through that move. That's something that we may see on this Pokemon. Leer is another option where it would lower our defenses. And then it's physical type attacks that it does get access to. It does get low kick. So again, playing off the same sort of type weaknesses as that focus blast, low kick could be on there. Flare Blitz, of course, is going to be a big, strong, powerful fire type attack in the sun. Wild Charge is an option as well for it, as well as Shadow Claw, which gives it an alternative ghost type attacking move that is on the physical side, not the special side. The likelihood is, though, I think it will be more special. It makes more sense. Typhlosion's got a much larger special attacking stat than it does a physical attacking stat. So I would say predominantly it is probably going to be a special attacking Typhlosion. But these are primarily the things that we're going to have to look out for. Eruption, I would say, is going to be a big one. Overheat, I could see definitely a bit like the Charizard raid that turn one set up the sunny day and overheat. Or set up the sun and eruption could be options there. Focus Blast. 
Blast, Solar Beam, Shadow Ball, and then Sunny Day, Will-O-Wisp as your supporting options on there. So these are the things that we're gonna have to watch out for and primarily what I have been building towards when I've been putting Pokemon together. So these are a few of the builds that I've got put together. Now there are some caveats with these builds and you might be thinking why have you got a Meow Skorada coming into a Typhlosion raid? It's part grass type, it's gonna be weak to those big fire type attacks. Well, there is a caveat to this and I think it will work depending on when the shield goes up. Now if we see the shield go up very early on like the Pikachu raid, this will not work at all, but this could be a very good strategy going into this raid. And I think something I'm looking to try out as soon as we go into this one. But Meow Skorada has got that part dark typing, so it will resist the ghost typing. And it does get access to one key move that makes this set, in my mind, work perfectly. So the move set is going to be Skill Swap, Fake Tears, Nasty Plot, and Dog Pulse. We've seen Meow Skorada perform very well in raids in the past. Uh, the skill swap is there primarily to steal the flash fire on the Typhlosion. Now, like I say, there are some caveats with this. The Typhlosion, for one, needs to have flash fire. Two, we need to see no screens go up the first turn because if screens go up, it means we can't skill swap the Typhlosion. But if we are able to get the skill swap off turn one, then we're going to be able to steal that Typhlosion's flash fire. We're then going to be immune to the big fire type attacks for the remainder of the raid, which is pretty huge, which allows us room to then go for the fake tears, the nasty plot setup, and then fire off dark pulses to Typhlosion. So this is the premise with the Meow Skorada. Like I say, there are some caveats to this working, but if everything lines up, I can't see the shield going up too early. I can't see Typhlosion having anywhere to stop us getting the skill swap off. It should, in theory, work pretty well. Meow Skorada, obviously, we're holding the Shell Bell item, so we've got a line of recovery there. We've got the Dark Terror typing on it as well. With an EV spread of 252 HP, 252 attack, ability of his overgrow. Don't really need to worry about the ability here because you're passing it over to the Typhlosion anyway. You are going to have to worry about the Focus Blast if it is there because of your dark typing that you've got. But if Focus Blast isn't there, then Meow Skorada is going to be in a really good position to take on this Typhlosion. Now, the Fake Tears is going to be there to lower the special defense on the Typhlosion. Nasty Plus boost your special attack, and the Dark Pulse is your main attacking move. We've got a modest nature, 252 HP, 252 special attack on the Meow Skorada. So, this is something that I think could work. Although I do say there are some caveats to this one working. The next one up is Spiritomb. I do like Spiritomb a lot into this raid. I think because of its ghost and its dark typing, it can do a good job. We've got the Shell Bell item again on this Spiritomb and it plays a lot like the Meow Skorada where we are going to utilize that skill swap if it is something that we can use going into this raid. We've got an EV spread again of 252 HP, 252 special attack with the modest nature. And Spiritomb has the natural bulk as well to be able to take some big damaging attacks from the Typhlosion. Skill Swap is going to be the move that we use initially to get rid of the Flash Fire on the Typhlosion, put it onto our side of the field. Then we've got a combination of Calm Mind to boost our attack, Special Defense, Snarl to lower the special attack on the Typhlosion, and Shadow Ball is going to be our main attacking option on there. And the nice thing about Spiritomb is it doesn't have a weakness to fighting type attacks like the Meow Skorada, so that Focus Blast really isn't going to be an issue at all. So you're only going to have to worry about things like Solar Beam if you can steal that Flash Fire from this Typhlosion, which you're really not going to worry about at all. And with the Shell Bell recovery there, after a couple of Calm Mines, you're going to be doing enough damage to kind of recover your health each and every turn. Next up, we have Fluttermane. And Fluttermane was a very good Pokemon to bring against that Charizard 7-star raid event, which was the Dragon Terror typing for good reason. It had the Fairy typing there, so you could do good damage to it. But with Fluttermane's Sky High Special Defensive stat, it might be able to stand up to Typhlosion pretty well in this raid. Uh, we have got the Shell Bell item on there because just in this raid, you're gonna need lines of recovery. It does make sense for it. And I feel like this item choice is probably the most optimal going into this raid, especially for the Fluttermane. We've got the Ghost Terror typing on there. Modest Nature, 252 HP, 252 Special Attack, just to optimize our Special Attacking Damage. We've got that Protosynthesis ability as well, which is another added bonus of bringing Fluttermane if Typhlosion does set up the sunny day, then you'll get that Protosynthesis boost, meaning you're going to be able to do a lot more damage with that active. Now, the move set for Fluttermane is Calm Mind. So, turn one, we're probably going to need to go for the Calm Mind to get our special defensive boost it even further so we can take those ghost type attacks that are going to be threatening us from the Typhlosion. 
explosion as well as the fire type attacks that come out from it as well fake tears is to lower the special defensive stat on the typhlosion draining kiss gives us a way to get some health back as well if we want and then shadow ball is our main attacking move on the flutter main modest nature of course and that is the ev spread but that is the flutter main and i do have my reservations about it but i do feel like it could be a decent option going into this raid nonetheless now the next pokemon we are going to talk about is houndoom it's going to be another pokemon that will have issues with any fighting type attacks that typhlosion will carry again because of its dark typing but it does have access to flash fire which gives it instant immunity to any fire type attacks coming out of the typhlosion really cutting down its ability to do damage to us and having to rely on things that maybe aren't as effective especially those ghost type attacks that are going to be resisted because of its dark typing i really like houndoom here but as i say there is the caveat to having focus blast on the typhlosion that could make things a bit tricky you've got to remember as well even if focus blast is there it is a low accuracy move so it's not going to be hitting every single time so you may be able to get around it that way anyway just because it's not going to be hitting so much shell bell is the item on the houndoom do have a move set of taunt that could be a filler though you could replace that with anything that you wanted but a way to stop things like sunny day getting set up again and it can support partner pokemon as well it can shut down things like howl that could be a possibility as well as that will-o-wisp that could be problematic to partnering pokemon nasty plot is going to be a main thing to boost ourselves up snarl there to reduce the special attack and damage on the typhlosion of course and then dark pulse is going to be a main attacking move ability has to be flash fire into this one with an ev spread of 252 hp 252 special attack with a modest nature now i do like town doom and i think it will be a really good one into this but if we do see focus blast it could make it quite difficult for bringing hound doom into this match and it hasn't got the best defensive stats overall anyway but i do think it can do a job just depends on what we see the typhlosion coming into this event with next up is another dark and fire type pokemon which is chi yu and it is one of the new ruin legendary pokemon it does have better stats spread overall than the hound doom doesn't have flash fire unfortunately but it does have some good options probably to optimize this you want to change its terror type to dark um, it is going to resist those ghost type attacks of course from the typhlosion shell bell the item of choice because it just gives us that line of recovery like we keep saying beads of ruin is the ability now the thing is with beads of ruin is it will lower the special defensive stat of the typhlosion but it will do the same with everything on your side of the field as well so it's going to weaken partnering pokemon good pokemon to go in with to solo but probably not one to take online and it could do a job i do think again it's going to fall into the category of being a bit problematic if we see something like focus blast because it is going to be weak to that attack another move set is nasty plot it gives us a way to boost our special attacking stat and light screen gives us a bit of defensive stability against those special attacking stats from the typhlosion snarl going to increase the special defensive stats of our side of the field and then dog pulse going to be our main attacking move on this pokemon modest nature and i would say that you probably want to just go 252 hp 252 special attack for ev spread on this one um for the chi yu but that is chi yu i do think a good option obviously a legendary pokemon as well so its stats are going to be good um but again it's going to have to be a bit wary about the focus blast if that is an option on the typhlosion and next up we've got the hydragon again going to fall into that category of focus blast being an issue if it is there or low kick shell belt is the option that we've got on the hydragon and though i still think it can do a decent job dark terror typing on it of course we've got focus energy which increases the critical hit chances after you've used it we've got nasty plot to boost our special attacking stats snarl to reduce typhlosion special attacking stat and then dark pulse is our main attacking option there ev spread is going to be 252 hp 252 a special attack with a modest nature and i think the high dragon is probably quite a solid pokemon as well with that dragon typing going to resist the fire type attack dark typing going to resist the ghost typing attacks it's just whether or not we see something like focus blast on there that could make this a little bit tricky and some other options that we've got going into this raid that i think might be quite useful are something like arcanine i do like arcanine a lot because it does get access to that flash fire ability giving that instant immunity to those fire type attacks that we could see turn one i can really see something like typhlosion go sunny day eruption turn one here and something like a flash fire pokemon like arcanine like the hound doom could be quite useful in those scenarios where it's able just to take no damage from that first turn at all unless we see the abilities nullified and then we see something like eruption fired off that could be a little bit problematic 
but otherwise I think the flash fire users will be quite useful in this raid. Now Alcanine is not a bad Pokemon at all, good, good stat spread. We've got the Dark Terror typing on this to play off the moveset a little bit here. Shell Bell is the item. We've got a moveset of Morning Sun, now that is going to play off Sunny Day if that is a factor with this Typhlosion raid. It will recover all of your health when you use it as long as the sun is in effect. Howl is an option that we can use to boost our attack and special attack. We've got Leer here, combine that up to lower the defense on the Typhlosion and then Crunch is our main damaging attack move on the Arcanine here. We've got an EV spread of 252 HP, 252 attack just to maximize attack and stats. Flash Fire is the ability of course and an adamant nature on the Arcanine. Moving on, the next Pokemon is a Pokemon we've probably all got built in our games already. If you don't, it's probably worth building one because it is just generally so good against even six star terror raids that you're going to be taking on in your game anyway. Although this is a seven star terror raid and it is a Nileb, the fighting and ghost type attacking Pokemon. Now it has got good bulk to this Pokemon so it is going to be able to to take a combination of attacks from the Typhlosion. You're still going to have to worry about the Shadow Ball, I think, more than anything because you have got that Ghost Typing. Can go for that generic set. We've got the Shell Bell item on there, and Annihilate might be a Pokemon that could come into this raid and solo it, but we will have to wait and see. I'm putting this in here because it is an option that does keep surprising me every time we go into these seven star raids. I don't include it and then it turns out it does the work once again. So we're putting it in here today just as an option that you can try at the start of the raids and obviously when the event goes live we will be able to clarify if this does well or not. But the set normally is just bulk up screech, drain punch and rage fist. Rage fist is going to be your main attacking option on there. Uh, EV spread of 252 HP, 252 attack with an adamant nature, defiant ability on there as well. Now the one thing I would say about these physical attackers that aren't a fire type is that I would worry about the Will-O-Wisp, I would worry about getting burned because if you get burned then you're going to be in a way worse position be able to do the damage to to the Typhlosion and Will-O-Wisp is something that could cause Annihilate a lot of issues going into this raid and why I wouldn't put it in the top tier of Pokemon to choose from going into this event. But that is the Annihilate build and definitely something to consider, especially if you've already got a build in your games. Next up, I think Umbrian is a nice option as well. It does have the ability to skill swap as well. We've got the leftovers item because it does have a good way to recover. Dark Terror typing on there as well. Moonlight, that is going to be the move that you're going to play off to get recovery. Also benefits from the sun being up on the field, recovering full health when it is active. Skill Swap is there because it is a nice disruptive move. You're going to be able to take that flash fire and just have that immunity from those fire type attacks. And Umbrian bulky anyway, it's going to have the resistance to those ghost type attacks it does have the same issue of being weak to that focus blast or any fighting type attacks that we do see come out and this option there's a bunch of options that you can play on Umbrian it gets fake tears and things like that but the options here we're playing the screech and foul play set just to be able to lower the defensive stat on the Typhlosion and then take advantage of the foul play and especially if we see something like howl this might be quite a good option to bring and a good supporting option as well it does get a lot of supporting moves that you can take online support partnering Pokemon helping hand things like that that are going to be really useful but Umbrian generally going to be quite a good option to bring in this raid especially if you're going to go in with friends especially online and the last two pokemon that we're going to mention today and one of them is going to be pyro it is going to be a little bit susceptible to those focus blast uh low kick options that the typhlosion does get but i do think a really nice option nonetheless does have that fire and normal typing so it does mean that it will be immune to all those ghost type attacks the fire type attacks it's going to resist anyway it's not going to worry about things like solar beam that we could see on it so generally going to be quite a good pokemon we have given the dark terror typing shell bell is the item for a line of recovery and we've got a move set of work up snarl entrainment and dark pulse now the beauty about this is it works a little bit like the skill swap you don't need to necessarily go down this route, but the entrainment turn one because you are going to be naturally faster than the Typhlosion. You're going to be able to get this attack off first turn before it is able to move. And if it does fire off a big eruption or something like that into you, even though it's resisted, it still will be doing a lot of damage in the sun. The entrainment will copy the flash fire, which is really nice because then you're able to just have that resistance for the rest of the raid. And then you can concentrate on going for those workups, boosting your special attack and stat, reducing the special attack and stat with Snarl on the Typhlosion and then Dark Pulse is going to be your main attacking move. EV spread on here we have 252 HP, 252 special attack and it will be a modest nature on this Pyro and I do like this option because if we don't see something like Focus Blast 
on the Typhlosion. With that entrainment, turn one, you're gonna have complete immunity to all of those ghost type attacks and complete immunity to all those big, powerful fire type attacks. So Pyro could actually be a really good Pokemon going into this raid event, but we'll have to wait and see. Like I say, I do suspect something like the Focus Blast on there from the Typhlosion. And finally, to wrap up today is just another Pokemon that I would like to bring into this raid. It is Farigaraf. And the reason why I'm bringing Farigaraf is it's got good stats, it's got good general bulk, it is normal and psychic typing. It is going to be immune to those ghost type attacks though because of its normal typing, which is a big plus for Farigaraf. It does get Shell Bell and it does get access to Skill Swap as well. So a little bit like the Pyro, plays a little bit differently because of its psychic typing. Uh, with that normal type in, it's going to take neutral damage from those uh, big fighting type attacks. So it's not going to be as threatened by them. But if you can get the skill swap off onto the Typhlosion early on and then steal that Flash Fire, you're going to have the immunity to the fire type attacks and you're going to have that immunity to the ghost type attacks while you set up with something like Nasty Plot Amnesia. And then when you do decide to terrestrialize, you're going to be set up to a point with all your stats where you're going to have like plus six special defense. So you're not even going to worry about the ghost type in attacks coming out from the typhlosion and then you can play off the boosted sword power from your terrestrialization and do some big damage after all those boosts up with the nasty plot and amnesia it works a little bit like the slow bro strategy except you can skill swap over the flash fire you've got the immunity to the ghost type attack and Brigaraf might actually be quite a good option going into this raid so we'll see i think my top picks for this one would be the Furigraph. i'm quite interested to see how this works and then obviously the meow scarada as well as the other one that I do like going into this one with that fast skill swap that you can do turn one and then you can just set up and do a lot of damage to the Typhlosion potentially if we don't see the shields going up turn one. Now there's some other options that I did look at down here. Flareon, it just doesn't get the attacking options that you need. It does get flash fire. I think it could be quite a good supportive Pokemon in general. Greninja, I do think, is a good option. You could go with something like Roleplay if you want to get around the big fire type and attacking moves, even though it will resist it with its part water type in. But it is going to be weak on the defensive sides. But Roleplay, a nice option to steal that Flash Fire. And then you've got Rain Dance as another option, Swords Dance, and then something like Night Slash that you can play on as well there. Roaring Moon was an option I did look at, but I really do fear the Will-O-Wisp here from the Typhlosion and the fact that it's not got many setup options. I feel like those burns are going to be something that we're going to have to watch out for and it will really cut down the ability of Roaring Moon to do the damage that you need if it is burned throughout the whole Terra Raid. And that goes for the same as Tyranitar as well. I love Tyranitar. Its typing is perfect for this. The rock resists the fire. The dark resists the ghost, but I do worry about Focus Blast for one because it's four times weak to it. And also, if it's not there, then you're going to have the, the worry about Lava Plume Burnness, if that's a possibility, or just Will-O-Wisp if it is a supporting option on the Typhlosion. But all in all, we've covered a bunch of Pokemon in today's guide, so they'll all be linked down in the description as well if you want to take a closer look at each and every one of the builds. And I hope you found today's video useful. Let me know what your thoughts are and what your best picks are from the, everything that we've covered in today's video. Video. Let me know as well what you think about Focus Blast. Is it going to be there or not? I really think it probably will be there. So we're looking at things like Ferrigarath, Spirit Tomb, more optimal choices going into this raid. But of course, as soon as the raid goes live, we will go live covering it all. And then we'll do a bunch of testing as we normally do. And then throw up the best Pokemon to solo this within your game. So you have an easy time going up against this Typhlosion. But let me know what you think of everything in today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in. Do drop a like, it massively helps out the channel and subscribe so you stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content that we've got here on the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in friends. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you all in another video very soon. So until then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.